Hello and welcome to a brand new Mind Mastery video. Today I'm going to talk about a um, very important concept um, to Jungian psychology, if not the central concept of the whole or the totality of what Carl Jung was working on, um, and it is about individuation. So this process of individuation is quite similar, if not the same, as something called self-actualization or self-realization, if you like. And, and in very simple terms, it is about simply becoming a person who you meant to be um, or simply unleashing the whole potential that your personality is uh, capable of. So first of all, it's not really about self-improvement or changing certain things about yourself in order to be that great person you imagine yourself you want to be, in order to meet that goal of ideal self that you are that you might be having in, in, in your mind, but it's more about becoming whole, becoming a, a total person, if you like, embracing all different aspects of your personality and kind of sticking them all together in order to make them work, in order to um, be a very distinctive person in the world, but equally being able to feel that you're a part of the world at the same time. Um, I know it might sound a little bit like a paradox, because how can you be or feel a separate person, but at the same time, how can you feel as being a part of the world, as being a part of a society of the or even the universe itself. Well, if you are familiar with Jungian psychology and how the mind looks like from the inside by using the Jungian model, we have different parts. We have our ego, we have our persona, we have our personal unconscious containing our shadow, and we have this collective unconscious which contains all different archetypes, including the anima, and animals and at the bottom of everything is something called the self um, which basically contains all our drives our motivations our desires and needs and um, and basically it is there to fuel our creativity in the world to help us to express ourselves however um, it shouldn't be mistaken for something that we are and Jung was warning everyone about this, that we shouldn't really identify fully with the self itself because um, since it is very, I should say, wild part of our personality or ourselves, it doesn't just contain all these nice, beautiful drives that allow us to create various things, uh, but also it contains very destructive and aggressive drives such as, you know, drive to kill other people or drive to commit suicide or drive to you know destroy ourselves and destroy everything around us just like in the animal kingdom and um, animals don't really distinguish between good and bad but they do what is necessary for survival individuation is about this process of integrating all these components integrating our personal unconscious and integrating our a collective unconscious into the ego itself but without um, entirely being controlled by, by unconscious processes because that misses the whole point of individuation um, and development of ego. Jung distinguished two phases in, in this process however I think it's a little bit more complex than this um, and he mentioned about the, the fact that the first half of our life is about develop the, developing the ego, uh, finding our place in the world, such as, you know, taking care of our career, our education, money, resources, family, you know, social, social network, etc, etc. And the second half of our life, which starts somewhere between the age of 35 and 45, and the second half of the life is about actually developing our spirituality, posing this big existential question about the nature of everything um, and similar stuff. Most importantly, he pointed out that after this threshold, when 
um, you are kind of in the middle of your life, you're basically shifting towards doing everything you haven't been doing before um, in order to develop that other half of the personality that, personality that you have been neglecting because, you know, you didn't have time, you didn't have energy and there were other priorities to do. However, in my opinion, this process is a little bit more complex because it doesn't mean that all people just wait for this midlife crisis in order to integrate um, the material from their unconscious, but it can happen anytime. I mean, if you are willing to investigate, if you are curious about your mind, if you are curious about, uh, you know, what's going on around you and, and stuff like that, then, you know, I don't really see any reason why people wouldn't work towards that individuation and much earlier than than being 40 years old. So we might wonder, how do we integrate this material from our unconscious? How do we develop our ego, if you like? Well, first of all, from the perspective of Jungian psychology, the ego itself, it's not something bad. It's not something to be disgusted with. It's not something that will um, make you narcissistic or egocentric. It's quite contrary. However, there are various tricks that ego can use in order to prevent your development, in order to prevent you from, uh, you know, reaching towards knowledge about yourself and about the others. And in these cases, it is because the ego itself is insecure. It doesn't tolerate the knowledge from outside. It doesn't tolerate um, kind of contradictory evidence to its existence because its automatic reaction to anything that is contradictory is simply anxiety. And as we know, most people will do everything to avoid anxiety. Our ego will have this automatic reaction towards anything that is contradictory to our knowledge. So that's why it might be quite a um, difficult experience for ourselves when our shadow or simply qualities which we don't like about ourselves kind of begin to surface. So we start to realize that Maybe it is not other person who is bad or doing something wrong, but at the end it is us and, and similar stuff to that. However, in order to proceed with this individuation, we have to go past this anxiety. We have to go past this um, safety mechanisms, if you like, that prevent us from um, reaching out beyond our comfort zone, reaching out towards something that we are not aware of yet reaching out towards knowledge that will enhance our, you know, perception or our understanding about the world. And in essence, this is a very point of individuation to stretch your ego, not abandon it, not destroy it, but kind of make it more flexible so it can tolerate various uncertainties. It can co tolerate contradictory evidence about itself and it can become aware of the personality trait that it didn't tolerate before and kind of suppressed into the unconscious. In various explanations, Carl Jung focused on describing this process as a kind of hero journey. In many, many ways, um, using our ego to kind of extract the knowledge from our unconscious, extract the knowledge from what we are not aware of yet, um, it could be very much compared to this hero myth because you have to leave the comfort zone, you have to leave the place um, in which everything is familiar, everything is comfortable, um, and you know everything about yourself and you are very secure about your identity and you simply precisely know who you are and what you are not. Um, in order to extract this knowledge from the unconscious, you have to leave that all behind uh, and be comfortable with whatever you might encounter on the, on the journey. It might all sound very nice. Oh yeah, now we have a method to um, develop ourselves or increase our potential in the world or whatever. However, the problem is that you cannot really force this process. You cannot say one day, oh yeah, let's do it. Let's reach to my unconscious in order to uh, pursue this, this knowledge, this secret knowledge about ourselves. 
it would be very difficult to do. You might reach to your personal unconscious by using things like dream interpretation or active imagination or producing some sort, some sort of art that will you know, trigger this intuitive or unconscious processes. Um, but it is still not enough because very often your ego might stand on the way for such content to come to the surface, if you like. So you would need to be very willing to uh, drop the comforts of the ego. However, these little tricks that you might want to use are not really enough to complete the process of individuation because this process is more or less automatic. However, what I do believe is possible is to wait for the right time to do it. Simple as that. Um, obviously, you cannot really force what sort of dreams you're going to have tonight. You cannot force whether you're going to have dreams at all. I mean, you might train in some sort of lucid dreaming, but it will not be the same thing as, you know, spontaneous dreams arising from your unconscious. Based on everything I've been reading about Jungian psychology and, you know, my own personal experiences, as well as experiences with my own clients, that simply thinks that we cannot properly name them by using words or we cannot really explain them by using just simple logic or simple algorithms or whatever you want to call it. But simply there are different forces in different situations we should be just simply left without analyzing them, without putting a label onto them, um, and without trying to explain everything in a scientific manner. And partially, that this is what individuation is about: letting this process to be, let it, you know, let it flow. But at the same time, we can aid it by becoming aware that very often our ego might stand on our path of development but at the same time it is up to our ego to facilitate this process because it is the ego that can mediate between the reality itself and our unconscious thank you very much for watching